Hello, I'm Tom Camp, DevRel Engineer at Ably, and I'm here today to talk to you about component locking, making use of the new product from Ably, Spaces. We'll be going through what is component locking, why it's useful, and then finally going into how you can implement component locking yourself, making use of the Ably Spaces SDK. So what is component locking? Component locking is the capability to restrict access and editing of a certain element of a page or application to only one user at any one time. This is very useful for say a cell in a spreadsheet or something where you want to have it such that when someone is editing one of these cells, no one else can to avoid any undefined behavior or unexpected results or collisions in data editing, which can result in problems after the edit has occurred and individuals not noticing that perhaps some collision of data with two people trying to edit the same thing at the same time has resulted in an issue. This can extend to any problem in any application where you have multiple people all trying to collaborate together, trying to let's say play a game together or edit the same document or Miro board at the same time, insert a certain text field into a form and so on, where you want to avoid these potential collisions in editing and data and make the fact that someone is editing something and you cannot edit it very clear to the end user. With that covered, let's look into an actual example of this. If you look here on the right, we have an example of a form where you have three fields to be editing. And here I can say hello, and I've made it so that it's making use of Ably just for the communication of data between clients so that we can still type and see the text being communicated between the different users. However, we can see that if I'm typing here, then the other user is still currently able to insert in, which obviously very hard for me to simulate here, but it means that there's a potential for mishaps to occur, people to delete things that other people are doing at the same time due to missing the fact someone else is editing it. There's no clear indicators that someone is currently engaged with something nor is there any way to block someone else from editing something where required. So for example, in this case, my desired outcome would be that when I click in the top browser here and start typing hello and such, it should indicate in this bottom bit of the browser that I am doing that with my name attached, as well as also the fact that I would not be able to now click and edit this myself. So with our goal defined, let's look at how we can make use of the Spaces SDK to implement this. If you'd rather follow this yourself at your own pace or just simply dig deeper into the actual code, including how we are doing the rendering and such, a link to the real code will be available in the description below where you can run it, it has execution instructions as well as examples for all of the other spaces applications we have demos for. To get started, however, with our code, the main thing is we need to make sure we import our spaces SDK here as well as also the Ably real-time client library. We're also going to be importing our code, which will be handling the actual rendering of blocking of text and all of that, and allowing us to specify that a field is locked to other clients. With the imports done, we now need to start off by actually importing our Ably client library here. This will be used to establish a connection to Ably, which will be used by Spaces SDK to communicate with Ably with authentication. In this demo, we'll be making use of an auth URL, which generates a token and is our recommended way of authenticating with Ably. And you can find documentation on this on the Ably website. However, if you just want to get started and get going, you can instead make use of an Ably API key directly here instead, specifying key, colon, your Ably API key. However, this is not recommended in production apps due to security concerns. Once you have the Ably client library instantiated and a connection to Ably existing, we can make use of that to instantiate our Spaces SDK. Once we have the Spaces SDK instantiated, we now want to make use of that to get access to a very specific space. In this case, we're calling it test form. The name itself is just used to make sure that all of the same clients are connecting to the same named space which will be allowing us to ensure everyone is receiving the information they should be. Now that we've defined the space, let's enter it. And we can enter it with a name, which will be automatically generated in this case, but you could call it your own name or whatever. It will effectively just be what the name is that appears to identify you as editing the field. Here, we have the function which is going to be called by each of these inputs when we click on them, or with the onClick parameter of those inputs. 
where we're going to be passing in a unique element ID to identify each of these inputs. So for example, if this were input one, this would be input one. And firstly, we check, is this element already locked if we're attempting to click on it? And if it is not already locked, according to the space we are in, we instead attempt to try and lock it ourselves. Finally, we have our actual subscriber, which is going to be listening into this space for any changes to locks of certain elements identified in this case by their element IDs that we're defining. Whenever an update occurs to a lock, so locking or unlocking, we call this and pass in the lock event that occurred. And if it is someone has attempted to lock an element and also the connection ID is our own connection ID, then we will enable location editing. So this will mean that we are allowing ourselves on this page to edit one of these inputs. But this effectively means that what we are doing here is entering the space. Whenever we try and click on an element, we do a check for seeing if we're able to lock it for ourselves. And then we have a final check saying, if we've successfully locked it ourselves, then we can enable ourselves to edit it. So for example, we remove the locks which stop ourselves from being able to edit one of these elements. So if we save this code and refresh these pages, initially it looks the same. However, if we now start trying to edit one of these, instantly you can see that an individual has created a lock where this is me indicating that this is me editing this element and I can type things saying hello and it's still being communicated. However, from this side, we've updated the state of this input to make it so that we can't click on it. And we won't be able to until such a point that this person unlocks the element by clicking off of it. And then this person clicks on that element to get access to it and defining the lock for all other clients. And the same applies to the other elements where you can see you can click through all of them and get them locked yourself. With that done, we now have component locking implemented for this form. The good thing with making use of the Spaces SDK is that it enables an abstraction of the complexity of actually defining these locks and guaranteeing that all the lock states are synchronized across all clients, allowing for you to apply this abstraction onto any problem you may have. You could imagine this being for a sheet where rather than us specifying the specific element IDs, we can specify the specific row and column that we wish to lock for our own editing. Likewise, even in something such as a Miro board, for any element that someone chooses to edit or drag or start typing text into, the same can be communicated with a unique ID identifying that specific component for locking. If you're interested in reading more information on component locking or the other features of Spaces SDK, you can find useful documentation, links to other videos, as well as also other materials such as blog content, all contained within the description of this video. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you have a great day.